This video is going to take us to Hollyhead and the area around Hollyhead. Hollyhead's probably most famous for being the major port for Dublin and the Republic of Ireland, taking traffic from Great Britain across to Ireland. Uh, it's well served with communications. There's the old A5, there's the new A55 dual carriageway and the North Wales Coast Railway route that brings uh, passengers in from Crewe and further afield. So Hollyhead is quite a, a transport hub in the modern world. We're going to look at Hollyhead as it once was in the time of the Romans and before that. So we're going to start in the town uh, and look at the Roman fort which is right at the side of the old harbour there's not a lot left of it but uh, we'll have a look at that and just say a little bit about that and its history uh, and then we're going to go due west to Hollyhead Mountain and to the summit of Hollyhead Mountain this is the highest point on the island of Anglesey at 220 metres above sea level and there are two features up here that uh, we're going to have a brief look at one is the Iron Age hill fort of Kerr y Tower, uh, which has uh, more or less been lost now, but there are one or two traces if you know where to look. Uh, and then also on the summit, the actual summit, the Romans built a signal station. The advantage of, of the uh, position here on top of the mountain wasn't lost on the Romans. Uh, and they had a signal station there which afforded a 360 degree uh, view uh, and obviously acted as an early warning uh, centre I suppose and that was linked to the Roman fort which was about a mile away so we're going to look at that and then we're going to go um, a couple of miles to the south where there are two standing stones in a field at Penrose Filey we're going to have a quick look at those and then back towards Hollyhead we're coming to this burial chamber which is known as Trefignath and it's quite an impressive uh, size this it was built in three phases and it's about 5,000 years old but it has fallen into uh, it's collapsed in really but uh, the site is preserved and the the stones are there and there are some stones still standing and we'll have a look at that I actually took some video of that so we'll see some video of that the other uh, features will be covered by still images the two mosaics that featured in the introduction to the video are of two saints associated with Anglesey the first is Saint Kibby from Holy Island on which uh, Holyhead is uh, is situated and the other saint is Saint Cyril from Penmon which is at the south of the island the two mosaics are actually part of the uh, Millennium Bridge that was constructed in the year 2000 that links the town with the railway station and the port. So we're looking at the satellite image of the Roman fort in Hollyhead and you can see its uh, location relative to the harbour. This is the old harbour, this is the, uh, the approach road into the port. The, obviously none of this would have been there in uh, the Roman period but we're going to have a look at that but this just shows you the uh, the shape the rectilineal shape of the fort uh, as you can see uh, there is now a church within the site of the fort and uh, that's surrounded by a cemetery when the Romans arrived in Hollyhead they appreciated straight away its strategic position overlooking the Irish Sea this was after all the most westerly outpost of the whole Roman Empire. Attempted foreign incursions had threatened Roman rule in other parts of Britain and the threat here in the west was from the Scotty, the seaborne Irish. Holy Island was provided with two new military installations designed to work in tandem. On the summit of Hollyhead Mountain, the highest point on the island, a rectangular watchtower was built with extensive views across the Irish Sea. Hollyhead also provided a sheltered east-facing harbour and at the side of this the Romans built a small fort. This is a rare example of uh, a three-walled Roman fort 
the fourth perimeter being the natural cliff edge overlooking the harbour. There's not much left of the fort now, just parts of the outer walls. The original entrances have been lost and most of the wall invisible today is a much later date than the original fort. The largest feature on the site is the 13th century church dedicated to St Gibby. It is thought this site was the location of a Christian monastic foundation granted to the saint in the 6th century. Its strategic importance can be appreciated when visitors look to the east over the later wall and see the proximity of the modern harbour and port. This is the satellite image of the summit of Hollyhead Mountain. The trig point and the highest point is just there where the cursor is and that's where the Roman signal station was uh, was built. That little L shape of, of stones is all that's left of the signal station. But on the northeast slope is the uh, Iron Age hill fort area and uh, it's difficult really to uh, to pinpoint unless you know what you're looking for but i think that stone wall is part of the enclosing wall of the hill fort there are no buildings as such now but there's lots of loose stones but the the mountain itself is a, is one big limestone mass so uh, it wouldn't have been difficult to source the materials to uh, to build a, a an iron age uh, hill fort or a Roman signal station for that matter and that's uh, its location relative to the coastline and uh, to the east is the port of Holyhead <laughs> Predating Roman occupation, the Iron Age hill fort here is very similar in form to other forts in North Wales. Uh, with a commanding 360 degree views at the summit, the fort on the northeastern slope just below the summit overlooks the present town and harbour of Holyhead, a couple of miles away to the east. It's not easy to pick out the features as these tend to blend in with the natural rocky outcrops of the uh, mountain. Uh, the best view really was the um, satellite image that we looked at earlier. The total area of the rampart enclosures was about 17 acres. There are no identifiable structures to be seen on the slope but the remains of the Roman watchtower are still discernible at the summit. This rather impressive pair of Bronze Age standing stones are situated some 11 feet apart and are up to 10 feet high. There's a long but unsubstantiated tradition that they were originally at the centre of a stone circle and that a stone kist containing bones, spearheads and arrowheads was found between them. A 
burial chamber called Travigna and it's three chambers in one on the right is the earliest chamber which is about five and a half thousand years old and subsequent to that another chamber which is in the middle is, is slightly younger I'm not sure how young and then on the extreme left is the final chamber that was added and the one on the right the entrance faces to the north the other two the entrance faces to the east and that reflects a change in the uh, religious beliefs of uh, those that uh, were buried here It's quite a large monument, but as you can see, it's uh, quite d dilapidated really. It would have originally been covered with earth, but that's long gone. But the uh, excavations did find some, uh, some flint and tools, so these were the first farmers on Anglesey. to this and we're going to go up to the newest tomb with the huge stones at the entrance and the huge capstone above This isn't uh, that easy to find, it took us a couple of attempts to actually locate this one simply because although the scene looks fairly rural across the way is the old aluminium works and just down there is the retail park and the A55 and the railway running by that white sign so it's quite close to modern Hollyhead and yet this is the ancient Hollyhead very ancient Badly collapsed. But then again, it's five thousand years old. The plan here shows the uh, three distinct uh, phases of development of Trevignath. Uh, number one is the earliest uh, chamber that dates from between 3750 and 3500 BC. And this was succeeded by number two which is shown in blue. Blue indicates the stones that have actually fallen. The dark brown stones are the ones that are still standing and they can be seen in the video and then the final phase of the chamber is shown at number three this is the easternmost uh, 
chamber of the three and this was later although I don't have a date for it um, the chambers got two capstones that are supported on five uprights one of which is a modern 20th century brick pillar as you'll have seen in the uh, in the video evidence from excavations here suggests that the final closure of the chambers did not take place until perhaps after 2250 BC the use of a tomb over such a long period serves to emphasize the significance of such monuments in the Neolithic landscape the tomb was excavated between 1977 and 1979 and subsequently laid out for public display as we see it today pottery and human bones were discovered when it was excavated in the 18th century also discovered at this time were stone and flint implements suggesting that the site was occupied before the burial chamber was constructed